Today we're going to look inside a computer desktop unit like this one here. And while this is an older computer, many of the components are the same on all computers that you have. On the front you can see that we have a drive for a CD or DVD drive. Down here we have some ports to, that are convenient on the front to hook in our audio devices, headphones, microphones, and some USB ports. We also have a power button here and probably a speaker. Turning it around to the back, this is where we would plug in the power cable that would go into the wall to power the computer. Computers are electronic devices, they need electricity, whether it be from uh, a wall outlet or from a battery. And then we have some ports along the bottom that's going to allow us to plug in our peripheral input and output devices. This particular case has a little button right here might be a couple screws here that I have to take off. I can press that button and take off this panel to get access to the inside of the computer. So let's take a, take a look inside the computer. Here I have where that power cable would be coming into. I have the power supply through these wires here. It powers, it reduces the amount of, of electricity coming into the computer and powers all of the other elements that are in there. So there's a tray actually here, this is kind of unique for this computer, probably wouldn't see this on a lot of other computers out there, but this particular tray holds the hard drive here. Hard drive is the primary storage device for our software and data that we're using on the computer. It's sealed from the outside and you can see that it has power here and a data cable that plugs into it. I'm going to set that off to the side. We can see also here, here's another spot, there's a, our CD DVD drive that we looked at from the front, that's where it's attached from the back. Inside here you can see these power cables come over and power this big green square. That is the motherboard of the computer that contains all of the wiring that connects all these devices together. Rather than wiring those devices together uh, with wires, they put it into a circuit board so it's nice and neat and it's easy to connect. The next thing we look for on our motherboard is the CPU. You can't really see the CPU because you can normally notice that the CPU uh, has something around it to get rid of heat. In our case, we have this hood that connects it to an external fan, and then we have this, uh, these metal fins here called a heat sink that help dissipate the heat from the CPU. The CPU puts out a lot of heat. I'll take that heat sink off and you can see where the CPU is mounted in, into this what's called a ZIF or Zero Enforcing, Insertion Force ZIF socket that I could then take this apart and all of that heat is being generated by this small CPU or microprocessor chip that you can see is in there and this is your computer. The computer is on this chip. This is your microprocessor. Everything else inside this device is there to support this processor. So just notice that on here there's a little a little notch here that shows me how to line that up. I carefully put that back in. You don't need to take the, the CPU off of your computer or, or take off all of these items, but that's where that is. So now from here, next to the processor is another heat sink, and that's for a coprocessor. Coprocessors like math coprocessors and graphics coprocessors help uh, the CPU with tasks that take a lot of time, so they offload those tasks from the processor and speed, help speed up the computer. Oftentimes they're called slave processors because they're there to do the, that extra work. Next to that, the closest thing you see are these SIM boards, and I can press down here on these um, sort of connectors here and pop one of these out. You can see what that looks like. That's the RAM of the computer. RAM stands for random access memory and that stores all of your programs and data while you're working on the computer. So when you're on the computer and you're working, you're working in RAM. RAM is a fast memory. When you go to save something or you load something back, that's stored on your hard drive because it's stored there permanently. So RAM is volatile st storage, meaning that if I turn off the power, the powers, uh, all the data in there is going to be uh, deleted. 
So we have our motherboard, our CPU, and our RAM. Those are our, our main processing devices. If we ever wanted to expand the functionality of our computer, there's these cream-colored cream -colored, uh, expansion slots where I could put an uh, external board in or what's sometimes called an add-in board to add in features like if I wanted to plug in something like a musical keyboard, I could plug in something there uh, if it wasn't connecting through a USB port. I could add maybe a Wi-Fi connection to this desktop. I could potentially add an additional graphics card in there to speed up the graphics of my machine if I like to do a lot of video editing or gaming. There's also a battery on the motherboard. Now, this little watch battery is certainly not enough to power this entire device. So this battery serves to store the time and the date on the computer. If I unplug it from the power, the next time I plug it back in or the, the, if the power goes out, I don't have to reset the time and the date. That's all that's for. So that's the basics of what you see inside of your system. On the back of your system, you are going to see some ports. You can see on here, the ports connect directly into the motherboard here. That's how we get other items or external devices connected in. So on the back of our system unit, we have these ports. Down on this side right here, we'll prop this up so you can see it a little bit better. You see I have these ports here for audio. This blue one here uh, has, uh, I think, 16 pins in it. And that is for, excuse me, that might be a 25 pinner. That's there for my VGA, which is to plug in my monitor. This is an old male 9-pin uh, serial port, probably used for nothing now because all that's been taken up by USB. This is a parallel port that used to be for a printer, but probably most of our devices connect today through these USB or universal serial bus ports. Anything from our keyboard, our mouse, to a digital camera, to charging our phone, all of that's done through the USB ports. And finally, we have our network connection here which is done through this Ethernet port where we would plug in an Ethernet cable into that and I'll show you what that looks like. This is how I would connect this to a network that would then allow me to connect to other computers and eventually get onto the internet. I would plug in a cable like that which would give me connection to my network. So there you have it inside your computer uh, unit. Take a look at the different parts and see what they do.